Welcome to The Authority File, the podcast where you'll hear conversations with academic librarians, technologists, researchers, and authors whose work is laying the foundation for higher education's future. I'm Bill Mickey, your host and the editorial director at Choice, and I'm excited to be speaking with Nicola Jones, who is director of the SDG program at Springer Nature, SDG standing for Sustainable Development Goals. In the next four episodes, we'll be addressing, you guessed it, sustainable development goals, but our discussion will specifically address how a major publisher has realigned some of its output to match and support the United Nations sustainable development goals. As director of Springer's SDG program, Nicola is responsible for coordinating the publishing activity across Springer Nature's portfolio as it relates to the UN's goals. This has required significant changes to the publisher's interdisciplinary relationships and activities from both an editorial and operational perspective. Nicola is here to give us an insider's look at those changes and how they've been rolled out to the academic research and professional communities. This series is brought to you with support from Springer Nature. In this final episode of our four-part series, we look at how Springer Nature products evolved to cover all of the goals and how open access has factored into the mix. So let's talk a little bit about sort of the the continued product evolution um, and a little bit about open access too. Um, So the Nature Nature Journals program, you know, how did that evolve to cover all of the the goals? Yeah, so it was back in 2011 that Nature Climate Change was launched as the, the sort of forerunner of nature's move into addressing global challenges within its Mm -hmm. publishing program and nature climate change um was the first journal they launched that had a social science editor not just science editors and it marked a real departure from sort of basic science Hmm. or traditional scientific disciplines into something like climate change wasn't and still isn't a scientific discipline but it requires that it's a really urgent global problem that we yeah. have to solve. Right. And it requires insights from lots and lots of different disciplines. And so they brought together experts to be editors for that journal from lots and lots of different disciplines. And then from sort of 2015 onwards, they, having seen the success of the nature climate change model, replicated that to address other topics that were organized around kind of thematic or challenge-based areas rather than around traditional academic disciplines. And so Mm -hmm. the program evolved uh, with the launch of Nature Energy, Nature Sustainability, Nature Ecology and Evolution, Nature Human Behaviour, Nature Food, Nature Mental Health, and this year Nature Water. And all of these journals sort of deviated from the traditional nature editorial model by bringing together teams that had expertise in different disciplines that were tackling the same problem. It's been really exciting to see how those journals have really taken off and succeeded. I think the kind of received wisdom was that to launch a journal in this kind of nature traditional high impact space you needed to be quite focused around your discipline and and what this this i'm trying to think what terminology we use sort of global challenges i suppose based right um sustainable development type journal extension has proved is that you know there is high impact research being published on these topics from lots Mm -hmm. of different disciplines and there is a real space for this nature journals aren't launched without there being an awful lot of background research and data analysis going into this to to determine when you know when the market is ready for that kind of journal in a particular space i think it's really exciting to see the way in which nature has helped to bring attention to these areas through the launch of new journals. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We, we, we talked to Dr. Rebecca Cooney um, 
the editor-in-chief of the uh, journal Nature Mental Health not too long ago, which I think literally just launched. Like, yep, yep, oh, that launched this year. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's cool. Um, likewise, I'm wondering if we could take that concept and put it on top of the book series. You know, how has it set up its books? How has Nature set up its or, or Springer set up its book series? Um, and I think it looks, you know, it appears that it's pursued a little bit of a unique path in that it's a cross imprint um, kind of organization. Yeah. So I think I mentioned already that the Springer SDG book series was set up really shortly after the goals were adopted with this model of 17 subseries, each headed by its own advisor, one mm -hmm. for each of the goals. Actually, now it has 18 subseries because they realized that there's some research that just doesn't fit into a single SDG bucket, but still clearly relates to the SDGs as a whole. So they have this 18th additional series that's like all the goals. Yeah. Um, at the time that we were talking about publishing more SDG related content, colleagues at Palgrave Macmillan were also interested in launching an SDG series. And we felt that having two series that would compete with each other, that were both published by Springer Nature, was not going to be helpful internally certainly, but also was not going to be helpful for the market mm -hmm. externally. It was not something that was going to be needed. At the same time, the two different books publishing brands that we, the two different English language major books publishing brands that we publish under, Springer and Palgrave Macmillan, have their own individual identities and speak to quite specific communities. And there's not necessarily a lot of crossover between those imprint identities. But sustainable development is an area that they're both engaged with. So we felt that by having the series exclusively published under the Springer imprint, we might be alienating some of the uh, communities who identified more strongly with the Palgrave Macmillan imprint. Right. But who were publishing valuable research that relate to the SDGs. So for the the, again, the first time, to the best of my knowledge, um, we extended the Springer series to also cover the Palgrave Macmillan series. So we have a cross imprint Springer Nature SDG series in which the Springer titles are published under the Springer series or under the Springer imprint. I'm sorry, under the the 18 sub series, and they have a very Springer like visual identity. Mm -hmm. The Palgrave Macmillan titles are published under the Palgrave Macmillan imprint and they have, again, under 18 subseries and they have a very Palgrave Macmillan like visual identity. But the visual identities of both imprints within this series have a kind of connection to each other that we don't typically see between Springer books and Palgrave books. Mm -hmm. It's been a really nice, um, a nice, quite unique project to be uh, I, would, I should say i was very peripherally involved with this um the work was really down to the springer and the palgrave editors who who work in this area and they've mm. done an amazing job to create something that maintains the identity that speaks to each community whilst at the same time joining up and and creating something that as a whole is better than it, it would be were they separate. Right, right. Excellent. So I'm curious how open access has factored into all of this, you know, both as a sustainable practice itself um, and as a way to expand access um, for your market. Yeah, so open access is something that Spring of Nature is extremely committed to. Transitioning to a fully open access world is something that I believe we have come out and said publicly <laughs> that we're committed to. We do see this as really uh, central to the SDGs. So, you know, if the the kind of central idea underpinning the program is that you need high quality research evidence to solve global problems, you need to make sure that that research evidence is accessible to people that need it mm -hmm. in order to solve those problems. 
And open access plays a really important role there. It doesn't play the whole role, but it plays a really important role. And making sure that our our SDG related content or as much of our SDG related content is not paywalled as possible is something that, um, you know, the two things really go hand in hand for us, our commitment to open access and our commitment to the SDGs. At the same time, we also want to make sure that people who are publishing research who are not themselves well-funded and not locked out of publishing with us in our journals or in our books. And there have been a number of initiatives underway uh, to try to facilitate that. So we uh, developed a partnership with the Lyricist Consortium in North America a couple of years ago, whereby they sponsor open access book publication of a select number of books each year that relate Mm -hmm. to the SDGs, then the only condition is that those books have to relate to the SDGs. They don't have to be published by authors who are affiliated with Lyricist institutions. And it's a really wonderful example of an organisation, in this case, the Lyricist Consortium, who really shares that commitment to opening up research that relates to the goals Mm -hmm. so the way in which that works is that editors say you know i've got this book it relates to this goal i think it's a really good candidate for opening up under under that program and they're submitted to lyricists as a as a proposal and then they say yes we're happy to use the funding for this or no i think in most cases yes (laughs) yeah right (laughs) not too many no thank yous (laughs) good (laughs) um so a lot of a lot of the content is aimed, you know, at policymakers um, and 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 businesses that need this kind of research to develop policy or, or you know, um, fall in line with SDG related regulations. But you know, I'm wondering, you know, how does this also trickle down to the higher education market? Yeah. So I mean, I think we're seeing increasing demand from students for courses that relate to sustainable development. Mm -hmm. I think there is this, you know, something to be said for this being a kind of generational shift Yeah, that I think is only going to increase. And you can see with something like the Times Higher Education SDG rankings, how higher education institutions are seeing this as a kind of badge of honor themselves not just in terms of the their own research outputs but in terms of their status and position as a global university so as higher education becomes more globalized as well i think we will also see increasing demand for this kind of interdisciplinary course that relates to societal issues mm-hmm. And of course, the research publishing that we do um, filters down into things like textbook publishing and our association with researchers at universities. In many cases, they are also educators at those universities. I think we are starting to see a kind of real shift in terms of of what the expectation is um, from research and higher education in support of a sustainable future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Excellent. Well, Nicola, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for for joining us on the program. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. You just heard from Nicola Jones. Nicola is director of the SDG program at Springer Nature. This four-part series is brought to you with support from Springer Nature. As always, underwriting opportunities for the Authority File podcast are directed by Choices Advertising Manager Pam Marino, and all of our episodes are produced and edited by Choices Digital Media Producer Sabrina Kofer, with support from Digital Media Assistant Ashley Roy. That's all for this week. Thanks for joining us.